So question two, differentiate between risk assessment procedures and test of controls. Guys, I'm happy if you just said yes, it's a risk assessment procedure or no, it isn't. And if it isn't, then by default, it would be a test of control. But guys, test of controls we're going to get to at a later stage. So I wouldn't worry if you didn't know what to say there. But select a sample of invoices and inspect for the sales manager's signature. Now we know that a risk assessment procedure is going to be inspecting documents. However, guys, taking a sample and looking for a specific signature on that sample is not a risk assessment procedure because there's too much work involved here. This is a test of control. You can see there, I'm not trying to understand I'm actually testing and that's the difference between a risk assessment and a test of control. A risk assessment, I'm trying to gather info to understand. A test of control, I'm actually testing the control itself and this control would be an authorization control. Inquire with the sales manager as to the authorization process for invoices. So this is a risk assessment procedure. I'm just asking how they authorize, I'm asking about a control activity, this is gathering information. It is not a test of control because by just asking what the process is doesn't give me evidence that the authorization control is working. So it's only a risk assessment procedure. Inspect the code of conduct. The code of conduct explains how everyone in the business should behave so it forms part of the control environment. If I'm looking at this, I'm not getting evidence over a specific control activity. I'm getting evidence over the control environment. So guys, this is a risk assessment procedure, trying to understand that they have a code of conduct. Walk through the warehouse to see if there are security cameras. This is a risk assessment procedure. I'm performing that walkthrough to see if they have security cameras. Guys, this also can be a test of control if I'm testing whether they have access controls. Okay, so in this case, it could be seen as both. Inquire with internal audit as to the process followed for risk assessments. I'm trying to understand how they assess risks in the business. I don't get detailed audit evidence from that. It gives me information. This is a risk assessment procedure. And it gives me information about one of those top indirect controls. Remember, control environments, risk assessment procedures, and the monitoring were indirect controls. Inquire with management as to whether there are industry-specific regulations that the business adheres to. Once again, I'm trying to understand the regulations, I'm trying to gather the understanding required of the entity so risk assessment procedure I don't get any detailed test from that or evidence from that inspect the creditors reconciliation was performed so I've gone and understood they do re creditors reconciliation I've gone and looked to see it was done this is a risk assessment procedure because I want to see that a control activity has been done but it can also be seen as a test of control because I am testing the creditors' reconciliation. So if we have a look at the solution here, guys, you'll see it's been set out. We've got a couple that are both, and the rest are either one or the other. Okay, so guys, to summarize, we perform risk assessment procedures in order to understand the entity, environment, and its internal control, including the business cycles, because we need to understand those as part of internal control. Therefore, we can now develop an audit strategy, which is going to make sure that we identify the inherent risks from understanding the entity and its environment, and identify the control risks and the deficiencies in internal control, because we understand internal control. So that is why we have to go and understand both because they help us to identify 
the risks of material misstatement, which is the sum of inherent risks and control risks. Remember, that is our goal, to pick up the risks of material misstatement and that, that sentence, risk of material misstatement, is made up of your inherent risks and control risks. That's why we understand both of those. And we need those, all of these risks, because we have to assess them to see if they result in the material misstatement. Because remember, our objective is to determine whether the financials are free from material misstatements. Okay, so next week, guys, we go into how we pick up all the risks. We now understand everything that we need to know about the business. And now, from knowing all of this, we can start to pick up the risks in each of the elements of the understanding of that entity and its internal control. The types of questions you guys could be asked based on this information, design a system of internal control for a specific transaction. So here you actually have to go and discuss the cycle that we want them to have. So you're going to have to discuss the documents, discuss the people who need to fulfill the different roles in the cycle and the controls around the process from initiating the transaction until it eventually ends in the financial statements. Okay, so the cycles we've already put down, that you jotted down, you would have to go and write that down as their cycle that, that you want them to have for that transaction. Most common way you would get tested is to identify the weaknesses or the control deficiencies in a cycle. So like the question we did, here is the revenue cycle, what's the problems? And then you need to compare their cycle to the cycle we think they should have and pick up where they are missing or the control is not working. Okay, identify the assertion affected by the control deficiency. Remember we've done that too where we've said this is the control, it's trying to address this risk, so this is the assertion that it's trying to achieve. So now, where a control isn't working, it's about working back to. If it's not working, it's not addressing this risk, which means this assertion could be wrong. And describe the impact of the controls on the audit approach. So now, having understood the controls, are the controls considered effective or not? Just from an understanding, guys. You're not testing and concluding. You just, from your understanding, do I think those controls look like they would be addressing the risk, yes or no, and based on that, how's it going to affect my audit? So if I think the controls are going to work, then I'm going to want to test them. If I don't think they're going to work, I'm not going to test them, and ultimately, we would follow a different approach. All of that stuff we're going to get to in the next few weeks. All the best with your revising of these major topics.